And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Saltipus, which was a request from Dennis Saltasaurus via our Patreon and Discord. Specifically, the request was a dinosaur from Scotland, and we found one. Well, it's a dinosaur form, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, thanks for the request. It's funny that their dinosaur name is Saltasaurus, and the one you ended up finding was Saltipus. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I had the same thought. So Saltipus was a dinosaur form that lived in the late Triassic in what is now Scotland, found in the Lossy Mouth Sandstone Formation. And at first it was thought to be a theropod. So that's how it makes it on this list. (laughs) Because it turned out not to be a theropod? Because for a while it was thought to be a dinosaur. Oh, you said it's a dinosaur form? Yes. But it's a non-dinosaur dinosaur dinosaur form? Yep. Gotcha. Now, it looks like other early dinosaurs, because a lot of animals did in the Triassic. Mm -hmm. Small, slender, and bipedal. It's been described as cat-sized, estimated to be 31 to 39 inches or 80 to 100 centimeters long, and weigh about two and a half pounds or one kilogram. That is very light for a a meter-long animal. Yes, I also saw it described as pigeon-sized, but there are more people saying it was like a cat. Interesting. Sort of all over the place, pigeon to cat. Might be more about the weight. (laughs) Okay. Well, later estimates had it at about 20 inches or 50 centimeters long and about 0.2 pounds or 110 grams. Wow. That's a lanky individual. So, yes, it had some very slender elements, too, like its neural spines that were less than one millimeter wide. Holy cow. And it had a very long tail. About half of its body length was the tail. Oh, that helps. Mm -hmm. If you have a really long, skinny tail, it's like technically 20 inches long, but it's really only 10 inches of meat. Yeah. And then it's probably got a neck on the other side. So yeah, maybe its body is like a pigeon with a really long tail sticking off one end. (laughs) So Saltivus had five fingers on its hands and the fourth and fifth digits were reduced. They're shorter. It had relatively long legs and relatively short arms. It's possible that it hunted insects and small vertebrates, but no skull or teeth have been found. That's hard to know what it ate then. Yep. The type species is Saltipus elginensis, and it was found around Elgin, Scotland, by William Taylor, who showed it to Friedrich von Huhn in 1909, and Taylor was a well-known fossil collector in the area from 1890 to 1920. So then in 1910, Friedrich von Huhn named it Saltipus elginensis, and the genus name means hopping foot. Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> well, Hewn thought that Saltipus was a frog like hopper and said that the, quote, thin and flexible tail could be no hindrance to hopping despite its length. <laughs> it's like a kangaroo rat, but like a kangaroo <laughs> dinosaur morph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now most scientists think that Saltipus was a bipedal runner that used its long tail to help balance. That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the species name, Elginensis, refers to Elgin. Permian and Triassic fossils have been found in the sandstone deposits in and around the town of Elgin in Scotland, and they're referred to as the Elgin reptiles. Hmm. The holotype of Saltipus includes part of the vertebral column, forelimbs, pelvis, and hind limbs. Again, no skull. Well, it's not too bad, though. You got a bunch of limbs. Well... It's not well preserved. Actually, in 2010, according to Michael Benton, who with a team reanalyzed the type specimen of saltipus, quote, the preservation of the saltipus specimen is modest to poor. Okay. So it may have a fair number of bones, but they're in garbage condition. Well, they're preserved as part and counterpart slabs that show the middle part of the skeleton lying belly down. And, quote, the fossil is represented, as is typical of specimens from the Lossy Mouth Sandstone Formation, by hollows in the medium-grained yellow sandstone. Essentially, all bone material has vanished. Oh, jeez. It's like just a a cookie mold. Yes. So it's kind of known from the spaces left in the rock where the bones had dissolved. Jeez. Hewn had wrote, quote, most of the bones are changed into brown iron sand. So, again, that skeleton, or, you know, what was found. It's the vertebral column, the left forelimb, pelvic region, hind limbs that are sprawled to the sides, and part of the tail that attaches to the body. That includes 24 caudal vertebrae. Some scaly skin may have also been preserved. In 2010, Benton and others used casts, x-rays, and CT scans to re-examine the fossil, and luckily many casts and molds have been made. There was debate about whether saltipus was a dinosaur or a dinosauromorph, 
based on the specimen being incomplete and poorly preserved, which makes sense. There's often debate around poorly preserved specimens. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that Saltipus had two sacral vertebrae, which it used to be we thought that dinosaurs had more than two sacral vertebrae, but then later dinosaurs such as Herrerasaurus were found to have two sacral vertebrae, so it became less of a feature to look for. Yeah, and the, the sacral vertebrae are the vertebrae that go in between the hips. Of course, there's some, I don't know if I want to call it debate, but there's been some papers that have suggested Herrerasaurus is not a dinosaur, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Oh, so based on cladistic analysis, Benton and others found Saltipus to be a dinosaur morph because of the reduced fourth and fifth digits on its hands, as well as some other features of the bones. And they found it to, yes, be still a valid taxon because it had enough unique characters. And they found that it might be the closest relative of true dinosaurs. It's a common dinosaur ancestor. Now in 2017, and maybe our listeners remember this because we covered it in our show, Matthew Barron and others proposed that dinosaurs be divided into the clades Ornithoscolida and Saurischia instead of Ornithischia and Saurischia. I still like that. Yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> it's just, yeah, there, there are the no Ornithischians from the Triassic. It just seems like them being lumped in with the theropods makes a lot of sense. And we interviewed Matt Barron in episode 145 and talked a lot more detail about this, but Ornithischia and Saurischia. Saurischia had the lizard-like hip bones and include theropods and sauropods, and Ornithischia had bird-like hip bones and that included ceratopsians and thyreophorans. And you still see that classification, at least we did when we were visiting museums in person just a couple of years ago. Yeah, and actually pretty much all of the new papers published also still talk about Ornithischia and Saurischia. Nobody really talks about Ornithoscolida. It hasn't been really accepted. Yeah. There have been other papers that tried to replicate it or looked at alternatives, and the basic gist is none of them are supported any more than any of the others because we don't have enough early dinosaurs to really figure this out. <laughs> so maybe one day. <laughs> Need more fossils. Yeah, especially the early Ornithischians. So Baird and others, they found there were carnivores in both the clades Ornithoscolida and Saurischia, and that the sister taxon to Dinosauria, Silosauridae, mostly included herbivores, and that could mean that the common ancestors of both were omnivores, and there were omnivorous ancestors that lived in both the northern and southern hemispheres. Oof. Barron said it might not be possible to know for sure the origin of dinosaurs, but maybe they originated in the northern hemisphere, not in the southern hemisphere, as people had previously thought. And if that's the case, one possibility for an origin of dinosaur could be saltibus. I see. I was wondering why Saltipos was getting brought into this whole Ornithoscolida debate. Yep. Now, not everyone agreed that Saltipos was a good candidate for a dinosaur common ancestor. You know, it lived around the same time, but it's not the best fossils to work with. Well, yeah. I mean, the specimen we have certainly isn't a good candidate, but that doesn't mean the dinosaur or dinosaur morph or dinosaur form when it was alive wasn't a good, likely animal. Yeah. Well, there's another genus. Agnosphytus that was found in England that was found to be a basal member of Silosauridae and together with Saltipus, that helps show that dinosaurs and Silosaurids may have originated in Laurasia. In 2018, Barron and Megan Williams redescribed the holotype of the late Triassic dinosauriform Casasaurus and found that Casasaurus along with Saltipus were Herrerasaurs and that Herrerasaurs were a sister taxon of dinosaurs and not dinosaurs themselves. Wow. Now we're getting controversial. Yes. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't remember hearing too many people talk about this. I was just thinking Herrerasaurs are always in the, the dinosaur family tree. It's yeah. almost like taking sauropods out or something. That would be controversial. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this make this would make all the Herrerasaurs non-dinosaurian dinosaur forms. So yeah, taking them out of that. And they wrote that their phylogenetic analysis, quote, along with other recent analyses of early dinosaurs, pulls apart what remains of the traditional group of dinosaurs, collectively termed Saurischians, into a polyphyletic assemblage and implies that dinosauria should be regarded as composed exclusively of Ornithoscolida, Ornithischia plus Theropoda, and Sauropodomorpha, end quote. <laughs> 
they suggested reviving the name Herrerasauria for the clade, that's any and all taxa in the Herrerasaur lineage, and they also found Silosauridae to be the sister taxon to this clade that contained dinosaurs and Herrerasaurs. Hmm. But then you might as well, I mean, depending on where Silosaurids are, you can put that boundary of dinosaur wherever you want. So, yeah. <laughs> like, you can just include both Silosaurids and Herrerasaurs, or you can include neither, or whatever. It's pretty arbitrary what a dinosaur, <laughs> where that boundary line actually is. Well, if Saltipus elginensis is a Herrerasaur, it helps show that Herrerasaurs were in Europe in the late Triassic, and then Saltipus would be the first name Herrerasaur from outside the Americas. Other animals that lived around the same time and place as Saltipus include... Scleromachlis, which is a small archosauriform with long legs, Brachyrhinodon, a lizard-like reptile, Staganolepis, which is an armored reptile, Hyperodapodon, a beaked lizard-like reptile, and Pseudosugians, which are crocodilian lion archosaurs. Yeah, there was a lot more than just dinosaurs in the Triassic. Mm-hmm. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.